Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad that you guys are back visiting, seeing what we're up to today. And if you are new to our channel, this is something I do with my husband, Chris. We take thrift store found items and we give them new life. And in today's video, this is Chris. So the Chris is making over this beautiful, oh my gosh, just absolutely beautiful china hutch. I had been watching it on Marketplace and it first popped up, it was 150 and that's all. For a flipper, there's no resell on that, especially since we paint items. And then I actually had, uh, they must have been trying to sell it at a garage sale because then the price went down to 65. So then I saved it. I'm like, okay, let me think about it a little bit. Da da da, busy, 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 you know. And then the next thing you know, I wake up on a Sunday morning and they dropped it to $50. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even ask Chris. Usually I'm always asking Chris. I'm like, oh, $50, it is ours. Oh my gosh. That is, as as a flipper goes in our area, I know what we can resell one for. And so we have to thrift it um, low enough because on Marketplace, everybody always says they're in great shape, but we're not ever that lucky usually. So, yep, off we went to pick this beautiful hutch up and actually it needed minimal work. So, oh my gosh, a God wink moment there. So Chris is going to share with you the process of what we do to pieces of furniture and get them ready to resell. Um, so stay tuned to what he does to this beautiful hutch. You got to check this and it's a good size hutch guys. So here she is in all her glory. Look at her. She's just absolutely beautiful. I love all those details. I love the paneling in the back. She's got all her hardware. She's got plenty of places to display your collections and a ton of storage. It's always a giggle moment as you're taking all the doors and the drawers off and then you find a videotape. Well, doesn't that date it? It's kind of weird for Chris not to have any pieces and parts to have to actually fix. We, I can't even tell you, maybe a half a percent of the time we run across a piece that doesn't need any work. What a blessing. So all now he's just doing is get, mixing up some super clean in some hot water and going to get her cleaned up want to get any kind of furniture polish any grime any grease anything that would prevent your paint from sticking properly well i guess super clean can't get everything off <laughs> somebody had spilled blue nail polish in this drawer so instead of chris trying to scrape it too hard with a razor blade you know you don't want to scrape that wood so i'm just going in with some at plain acetone and just a q-tip and just gingerly working off that area to get that nail polish out Okay, okay, so when he got cleaning the piece, there was a little bit of damage, very minimal, so just some Durham water putty, probably just from mopping or vacuuming, you know, these pieces do get beat up around those kind of protective edges, so yep, just a little bit of the Durham water putty into a paste to let that dry to fill that boo-boo in. And then he's going to go in and give the entire piece a scuff sanding. That's just going to take that really shiny off. It's going to give something for that paint to grab onto. And after giving it a nice scuff sanding, he's going to go back in and wipe down the rest of the entire piece. He's still waiting for that Durham water putty, but it's a big piece, so there's lots to work on. And then all the hardware was with this piece. There wasn't any paint on it so it just needs cleaned up so some hot water and some dawn dish soap it's just a great degreaser just let it sit let it get any maybe if there was any pledge or any kind of polishing elements on there and then rinse them off and dry them good so now this isn't a super shiny piece there wasn't anything where you had to sand it down that you had raw wood and finished wood and so there's just so many details on this beautiful piece so he wants to go in and do an undercoat and those detail areas of black so he's using the ready to use black onyx that he gets right off the shelf at walmart so not to waste time and paint he just goes around the edges that he knows where he's going to be distressing to bring out all those beautiful details especially when it has this many drawers 
And then of the body of that china hutch, he's going to go around and do the same thing. Any areas, any sharp edges, anywhere there's a corner, anywhere that you want to bring out that beautiful detail, he's going to go in and paint black. Now, though he didn't get film of him putting polycrylic on those areas where he put the black, he sprayed the polycrylic because one that will keep that black there. So when he goes to distress it, the black won't be sanding off as easily. So now he's going in with the Graco sprayer and doing some kills, paint and primer in the flat white. This is definitely going to get this beast of a china hutch painted in no time. Especially when you have all those cubby areas to get into. It's a blessing to be able to have a sprayer. And as you see, he wrapped each individual drawer by itself. We have this random roll. I think it's trash bags I had thrifted quite a while ago before I even bought sprayers. And they have come in so handy to wrap drawers and protect them just using some masking tape. Now for all that hardware, our go-to, we are just doing this Hutch the Classic. The Classic White, this is a big Hutch with the black hardware. So going in with that Rust-Oleum paint and primer in the flat black. Look at all that hardware, guys. So now it's on to coat number two. Wouldn't it be nice if white would cover in one coat? Some of them maybe they do, but we haven't found one. But the nice thing about the sprayer is usually two coats compared to the four, three to four coats of brushing it on. But man, does that sprayer give it a nice, smooth finish. And I think when it comes to the white, I definitely think that this comes into that cottage core that's happening right now. After the black of the hardware is dry, he's going on with some polycrylic to give it a nice protective coat. The Rust-Oleum, the spray paint is nice, but you still want to give it a protective top coat for longevity. Well, I would say now just only the drawers are done at this point. Now you got to flip the hutch itself over. You got to do the other side of the front side of the doors. So, yep, it's never a quick, even though there wasn't a lot to do, there's never such a, of a quick thing as a flipping furniture. So after the opposite side got its two coats of paint and then it dried overnight now it's time to go ahead and sand it and chris like we like a really smooth finish and chris can control this orbital sander way better than i can he has some 300 grit sandpaper on there and what he's doing is he's taking that on the flat edges and that is just going to give you such a smooth finish and then now he's going to go in with a 220 sandpaper and he's going to go on all those edges 
all those edges that he spent that time painting black and sealing with the polycrylic that way as he's controlling sometimes when you got that orderable sander if you really want to go to town it might take it a little bit too much off and go right down to the natural wood underneath the stain so he's just going in and hand sanding yep all the edges of this pieces and oh man that is a lot <laughs> Not just with all that body, but with um, the doors and the drawers, too. Oh my, that was a whole lot of sanding, guys. I, yeah, good thing I have the power of editing so you don't have to watch it all. And then after taking the air compressor to blow all that sanding dust off, he's now finishing this piece up with some very thin finishing wax. Now this is a Kills Paint primer, so it already has a primer in it, and it's a wonderful sheen. Um, but just for one more level of extra protection, some very thin finishing wax in the clear. And if as Sandy didn't take him a long time, now he has to put back on all that hardware. But boy, is this piece really coming together. Oh, with the power of editing, I could not help myself when the, there's that many doors and drawers. So now I'm going to go in and put some contact paper just to give it that nice little hidden surprise when you open up one of the drawers. So I found this mosaic tile type at the Dollar General and just absolutely fell in love with it. I think it's like around three something a roll, but actually comparative to the Dollar Store um, black and white that I've used before. There's actually a lot on these rolls, guys. So I always find it easier to cut as close as I can, but definitely leave more than I need. And then start off with that very first manufacturer's cut along that front drawer and then work out in that way that I can get it nice and smooth and keep that flat edge, especially the manufacturer's edge. If I'm not cutting straight, that's the edge you're gonna see when you open up the door. And then what I do is I take my fingernail along all the other edges and then make that line. And then I can see where I need to release that pressure. So when I go in with my razor, uh, my X-Acto knife and my spatula, and I go to cut all the excess off that I have released that pressure and I don't accidentally tear it and it's easier to um, cut. Okay, so what did you think? I uh, Yeah, I think we got a great deal also, but oh my gosh, I don't know. I, the white sells really well for us. I know there's that, it's going out of style, but the farmhouse cottage core is definitely, it's a classic look. So I've been putting stencils, I've been trying to change up the color in our booth and some items sell and some are just sitting there. So when we have this beautiful hutch, you know what? white it is white or black so this one was just screaming white it was already dark wood it has some beautiful details that we knew distressing it would just bring out that deep out those details and the black hardware is just a classic ginger chick so 
Oh my gosh, just absolutely love it. I cannot wait for it to make its turn. And it'll probably go, I will probably price it between the $350, $400 price range and have to let it sit because it's a beautiful piece. We can't find pieces like this in our area too often. So the last one that we did that was big, we priced it about, I'll let you guys know, it sat for four months before somebody finally bought it. But for me, it's well worth it. And then two, it's a nice display place in our booth. So we'll see how it goes and we'll kind of compare in the season of the black piece that sat for four months that was beautiful or the white piece and we'll, whenever it makes its turn in, we just have to, you can't possibly fit everything and I'm not moving a piece of furniture just because it hasn't quite sold. I'll just gingerly lower the price. That's just how things work. You just have to figure out how to rotate your inventory. So that was just a little tidbit I thought I would share with you what works for us. So thanks for watching today's video guys and I hope we have inspired you in any way to look at thrift store found items, even marketplace for furniture. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time guys. Bye.